All right, well, I'll make this quick. Um, I'm going to keep my glasses on so I can read this. <laughs> um, so my name is Scott Hickerson. I work for a JT4 LLC, which is a, a government contractor for D DOD. Uh, I have a blog here if you want to take that uh, down. I'll also uh, show that at the end. Um, so about me a little bit. Uh, I've got over 40 years of experience in IT and uh, engineering. Uh, I'm a husband and a father. Uh, I'm right brained web development, IT expert, backyard mechanic, a left brain. I'm a singer and an actor and a dancer and a painter and a director. Um, uh, I'm also a gardener and a Taekwondo black belt. So, yeah. I don't know if that's for Taekwondo or for black belt, but yeah. Uh, so uh, I just want to talk to you about stuff we're doing because uh, I think it's really fantastic uh, the way we're being able to leverage this. Uh, SharePoint out of the box gives you uh, all of these things uh, uh, on-premise as well as online. So SharePoint Online works the same through Office 365 as it does on-premise. The APIs are very, very similar. Uh, it provides authentication. Uh, normally you integrate that with Active Directory. Gives you authentic uh, authorization for access control to uh, resources. Gives you non-repudiation for digital signatures uh, and digital signing. Uh, it gives you file management for check-in, check-out, like uh, a lot of uh, uh, shared web development. Uh, it gives you lists, which are akin to SQL data tables or an Excel worksheet. Uh, they can also be relational, so you can tie those tables together. Um, it also provides static file hosting uh, via document libraries, and it has a standard ubiquitous OData API. Uh, it includes uh, uh, it's functionality similar to GraphQL. Uh, you can actually get the children of uh, entities uh, on a one REST call instead of having to do multiple REST calls per. Um, so uh, the architecture of that is we use full JS in the front end uh, as a full front end development uh, platform. And then we also use uh, Vuex and Pina and Router and Axios and all that same kind of functionality. We're using NPM and Vite and that sort of thing. Um, and so uh, the index build, uh, then be we just rename that to home.aspx, so that becomes a default for SharePoint to deliver to the browser instead of downloading the file, which is the, the standard uh, process. Uh, we also have a SharePoint backend, which provides the backbone uh, of the API and the infrastructure and the database. So uh, there are a, there's a limit of 30 million records per list, so you can create uh, data tables with 30 million records, and you can also shard that across uh, lists, so you can actually uh, give yourself a lot of a lot of data space there. Uh, and again, this works on on premise as well as online. Uh, you can uh, it also provides uh, the UI to manage the back end. So in SQL or, or Oracle, you might use uh, Toad or uh, or SQL reporting services. Uh, this gives you a UI directly to it, uh, not as nice and, uh, uh, as what we build, but uh, it gives you kind of a rudimentary access to that. And uh, you can uh, drag and drop your, your code uh, straight to a document library, and it's immediately available to the users. Uh, you can also uh, do dev code in the production environment where you can see uh, your production environment's environment. It's, it's not going to change when you move it to the uh, production uh, document library. So that's very nice, not having a uh, disconnect between uh, development and production. Um, so uh, the benefits of this is that the code works on premise and online, as I said. Uh, we use SP Proxy, it's an NPM solution uh, for local dev as an API proxy. Uh, we uh, the corporate people really love this because it's leveraging their SharePoint uh, that they've already spent tons of money on. Uh, the static code and the data are all in the same namespace, so you don't have any cross-site problems uh, or uh, issues with that, cores problems. Uh, let's see, can inject. So we have uh, a GraphQL API that's running in Docker that's in the same namespace, so we can actually consume different external system data into our uh, view uh, uh, pane, so we can integrate data between different systems into one pane. We're using that for reporting purposes, so we can integrate data like that. 
Uh, it has a well-documented API. Uh, Office 365 personal licenses are about $5 a month. So that's a pretty low uh, entry point. Um, you, you get full stack implementation, even though you're only doing front end development because the back end's kind of done for you and it's out of the box. I guess this is similar to Firebase and uh, our app uh, folks that are here today. Uh, it doesn't require administrative privileges on the SharePoint system. Uh, you can still affect change uh, in, the, in the environment that you're in, in the scope. Uh, and it's secure out of the box, uh, including the API, so you don't have to worry about uh, data leakage or anything like that uh, within your application. Um, and then you have the document management check-in and check-out. And uh, so some other info, we have over 15 of these apps in, app, in production. So uh, those are, it's not just for development, but it's also for production. We actually use that for production. Um, uh, it's for the Air Force, the Navy, and we also have our DOD contractor. So we're using that in all those namespaces and successfully. Um, the, the customers love it. So um, we save cloud, you can save cloud hosting costs if you're not deploying something in Azure, you can do it in Office 365 in a SharePoint environment that you don't have to pay the extra Azure licensing fees uh, and subscription fees. Uh, you can also use SharePoint fields to override uh, and provide metadata on uh, different aspects of it. Uh, we use it for form and, and grid layouts uh, so we can specify whether a, a field shows up in a form, uh, where it shows up in the form, how wide it is in the form, all the different aspects of the form. And we can inject that when we load the information from the schema from SharePoint. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of development is done with TypeScript defining all of these uh, types. Well, we pull that data from SharePoint and we get the type automatically injected into the model and so we don't have to do that manually. And we can also change the SharePoint uh, list environment and that automatically injects that into our model. So it's, a, it's very fast at changing the, uh, the, uh, the application without changing the code per se. <clears throat> so we're, um, we're abstracting our application configurations out so that our code is uh, more stable and we don't have as much uh, change in our code, and we're storing those in JS, J, or JSON objects, uh, and we're starting to include our business logic, and I'll show you a quick example of that. Uh, so we're actually uh, minimizing the code change and heavy code reuse by taking some of the business logic out of the code. Um, and we also uh, integrate PowerShell uh, to, to a backend uh, worker to do uh, information change on the backend. So again, there's my blog. If you want to read about this a little bit more in detail, um, it's a uh, very powerful uh, ability to do uh, what we're doing. So this is an example of an application that's pulling data from SharePoint uh, out of uh, a sh the SharePoint list. And this is 15,000 uh, items. So this is displaying 15,000 items uh, in this screen. And this is a, basically a starburst chart using D3 to uh, display all this information simultaneously on the screen. So uh, this is a real nice uh, kind of 50,000 foot view of whatever data set you're looking at. Um, so this is an example of uh, a JSON object stored in a SharePoint list that is just a text string. We JSON stringify it, store it in the SharePoint list and then retrieve it, inject it back into the model as we load the application. Um, the, uh, this one is, um, which one is this? Uh, so this is uh, a configuration layout for a report. So we're actually using view-layout and that allows you to uh, rearrange the screen and then each one of those boxes on the screen is then becomes either a, a graph or a, or a grid or, or of information. So this JSON object here is actually the configuration for that. So. And then the other example is, um, this is where we're injecting logic. So uh, this information gets consumed in at load and uh, this uh, content is then uh, parsed through JSON and then used as part of the model to define logic in the application. So, 
And I think that's it. Short and sweet. All right.